Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Tuesday morning. Apologies yesterday that it took me longer to get it up. I've been having some technical issues and that may again happen today. Um, there's a lot of panic just now around the Omicron uh, variant. I heard somebody say, I thought this was really good, that Delta and Omicron are nothing to be compared with the Alpha and the Omega. I, I've been thinking about this a lot and we're going to look at Job 23, 13 to 17. In fact, let me read it first and then we'll just say something about it and something I want to read to you. But he stands alone, says Job, and who can oppose him? He does whatever he pleases. He carries out his decree against me and many such plans he still has in store. That is why I'm terrified before him. When I think of all this, I fear him. God has made my heart faint. The Almighty has terrified me, yet I'm not silenced by the darkness, by the thick darkness that covers my face. Now, Job is basically saying, God's in charge of this, he's got all these plans, but I'm, you know, he's struggling with that, he's, he's got a certain fear. Now, I've been reading this book, uh, God in the Wasteland, which by David Wales, which is utterly wonderful, and although it was written uh, a few decades ago, 1994. I, I, it's to me is prophetic. Now he suggests that in the evangelical church there are, and I, I think the wider church and in society as a whole actually, there are a couple of doctrines that have been neglected and one of them is this, is the providence of God. And it's interesting, I don't hear any of our leaders talking about the providence of God. What is God's hand in this? Oh God cares and uh, you know, but God can do nothing. And how is like this COVID stuff in the providence of God? Now, for me, the providence of God is a hugely important doctrine because I see things happening in my life that are negative or not good. And I think, well, this is in the providence of God and God is good. Wells says this, I, th I thought this was brilliant. Our experience of the modern world produces the sense that there is no sure and steady purpose pervading life. That purpose, like life itself, has broken apart into small, unrelated fragments that our daily routine is severed from the meaning that God once provided to it. I just think that's a, that's a wow factor for me. Um, he then goes on to talk about, we've got a, there are things that cause us anxiety. Uh, our world, he's speaking in the 1990s, our world becoming overcrowded or... Uh, the plague of AIDS or something comparable, horrible, comparably horrible, substantially reduces the human population. He talks about us having despoiled the environment. He talks about the deep unease that technology we have created could enable us to destroy. And yet he goes, the deepest causes of our foreboding, I believe, lie in our intuitive sense that the fabric that holds our society together is in danger of unraveling. And he, he says, you know, the center has gone. And I, I think that's correct. I, I think that's a very profound insight. And so we, here we have Job. And what he's doing is he's saying he does whatever he pleases. God is all powerful. God is, in fact, literally, he says, he stands alone. He is the one. He's unique. The Shema, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The oneness of God is hugely foundational in our faith. And he's saying there is this God who's got the whole world in his hands and I'm suffering. And to be honest, I'm not sure my suffering is over. And so he's terrified. That is why I am terrified before him. When I think of all this, I fear him. Now, far too many Christians go, oh, Job, you don't need to fear God, you don't need to fear God. Well, actually you do. Hebrews 12, 29, our God is a consuming fire. It's back to the oft-used illustration from C.S. Lewis in the Narnia Tales that Aslan is not a tame lion. We don't, as Christopher Ash says, we don't just breeze into God's presence. When we get to know who he is, it is a terrifying experience at one level. Verse 17, by the way, yet I'm not silenced by the darkness, could also be translated, yet I'm surely silenced by the darkness. Uh, you end up with a different meaning for either and yet in the same thing. You, you, it, it both fit. So I just want to finish with this. I think that 
if you've got an all-powerful God, if you've got a God in whom the whole world is in his hands, if you've got a God with whom not one sparrow falls without him knowing, that would be terrifying if God were not good. What is God's will for me, is, is Job is really saying, and I'm, I'm a bit scared of that. Well, I, let me just leave you with Romans 12. Um, Do not conform, verse 2, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The pattern of this world is seen in our news, to be honest. And being transformed by basically God's word enables us to understand that God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. See you tomorrow. God bless. Bye.